So, you want to know how to get away with writing an essay on a book you've never read, or how to ace a multiple choice test. Good, because you came to the right place. A YouTube video. As this longtime English major slash future teacher has some tips for you. This is essentially going to be a new game plus tutorial for school, as in at least have a semester under your belt before trying this stuff. Hopefully these tips can help you save some time and money. But don't forget that hard work and studying are the most important tip of all. My first tip, don't buy your books. Or in other words, realize that some books are optional. Sure, paying $200 for a copy of Romeo and Juliet is cool, but do you want to know what's cooler? Slapping .pdf at the end of that and being able to afford food. A lot of books, especially older ones, can be found online for free. All it takes is a quick Google search. I know what some of you guys are thinking, but my teacher says my book is mandatory. Honestly, the teachers that say that are, in my experience, the ones you need the book for the least. That's because they like to rely on participation. Which brings me to tip number two, summaries. A good way to cheese participation is through summaries. Trust me, when you're reading books like this, summaries are your best friend. Like the PDF trick, just type the name of your book and summary. My personal favorite sites are Schmoop and the aptly named Grade Saver. I'm not getting paid to say this, in fact I'm not getting paid at all, but I'm studying to become a teacher so I should start getting used to that. What I like to do is become an expert on a certain passage and voluntarily raise my hand and only talk about that passage. Um, according to page 240, this Romeo guy really seems to like Juliet. Then whenever the teacher asks me something like, Motifs of light and darkness run through the play. How do these references to day and night, sun, moon, and stars, torches and lighting provide metaphors for what happens in the play? I just deflect the question to someone else. Well... What do you guys think? And then pretend to stare in deep contemplation. I'm less about the reading and more about the writing. Anyone can read, but if you can write something that engages your teacher, I feel as if you deserve a solid grade. Which brings me to essays. If you're in a crunch or you're just incredibly lazy, there will be times where you'll have to write essays on books that you haven't even touched. Which brings me to tip number three, quote freestyling. What I like to do is I like to go to one of my aforementioned websites, find a quote that I like, and tie it to anything but the plot. For example, let's use this is my swamp from Shrek clearly Shrek is very possessive of his swamp he sees himself as the owner perhaps even a king maybe there's some correlation between himself and Farquaad clearly Shrek embarks on this quest not only to get his swamp back but to help view his toxic masculinity hell the whole movie is about him Shrek is obviously an egomaniac that loves himself so much that he has to get a girlfriend that looks exactly like him see that's a whole paragraph right there just take the plot come up with a crazy analysis and don't provide any evidence that contradicts you. Basically just write a game theory video. I'm kidding but suddenly I have the sneaking suspicion that Shrek is Sans. Now if you want to tie all this closer together you can try tip number four the triac method aka the BS method. This is a lot like quote freestyling but it's designed to make anything you say sound smart. Most of my essays follow the triac method which is thesis, restatement, illustration, analysis, and conclusion. You start with the thesis. I like dogs. Then you follow that up by restating it to sound more concrete. In other words can Canines typically seem to be more pettable than jellyfish or scorpions. To make it sound legit, look up some random book or scholarly article and illustrate it slash back up your findings. According to Mike Johnson of the National Agency of Animals, the number of people who are poisoned by touching scorpions is 12,000, while the number for dogs is zero. This is important because dogs do not excrete poison, and this makes them safe for humans to touch. Additionally, if you have a professor that likes to throw around keywords like toxic masculinity, just add them in there in a way that they make sense to stroke their ego and show that you're paying attention. Dogs also do not display toxic masculinity because males are as equally open to being pet as the females, and this is good for the <laughs> and this is good for the political climate of society. Finally, you wrap everything up in a neat little blow. <laughs> I mean Bo. In conclusion, buy a dog. The triac method when paired with quote freestyling and the summarized version of the plot could in theory have you write a paper without reading the book. Okay, but what if essays aren't the problem? Tip number five is for you, multiple choice laziness. Oftentimes when a teacher is making multiple choice tests, they'll rip it directly off a website. So if you type the name of the book and test questions, you'll probably find what you're looking for. That's actually what I ended up doing with the sagas of Icelanders here. And to my surprise, I ended up acing my medieval literature exam and the class as a whole, on my life, on my dogs, on my tapatio. Although I did read most of the books before sagas, but that's my point. Nothing can replace studying, but sometimes you gotta be on that Naruto tuning exam slash Reagan from Mob Cycle Lifestyle. If all else fails man, crank that font up to 13 and take that spacing up to 2.1 and pray to whichever. If you guys have any tips on this matter, leave it in a comment. I'm sure other people might find it useful, myself included. 
oh yeah. And to prove that what I'm saying is legit, here's the grade in my English class where I wrote a midterm about dabbing. Boom. Like, comment, and subscribe and tell all your friends to follow me on SoundCloud.